Hey guys, it's Mosley Villain. Welcome to episode 18 of the Baseball Journeyman. We are here at the Berlin Flamingos. And, well, today we are going to get ready for our third season at the club. Uh, first of all, we have, of course, our end of season awards. We'll be going to those in just a second. And then when we come back, we'll find out who has been crowned German champions for this season. We'll check in on the silicone stalks as well. And then we'll all, all, all uh, what's the full steam ahead, I guess, to uh, spring training of next season as we look to strengthen and hopefully get some pitches in the bullpen that actually are pitches. Um, so without any further ado, let's head off to uh, to the end of season awards, and I will see you on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Berlin Flamingos end of season awards. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Berlin. Danke, danke. Oh, wow. What a crowd. What an audience. And we'll tell you what, what a season as well. Nobody expected us to get into the postseason this particular year. We did that, and oh, we were so close, weren't we, to going even further and uh, and challenging to be German champions. But we'll come back next year bigger and stronger, and looking to uh, looking to take down this league. But before that, of course, we have to uh, we have to I think thank the players for their efforts this year, boys. You all put in a fantastic effort. Well done. Congratulations. The first award this evening is for most wins by a pitcher, and this man turned up. And oh, how he turned up this season. He set a club record with 11 wins. And the winner is, of course, the Hoff, Tyler Benninghoff. The next award is for the highest batting average. And, well, two awards tonight and two club records. An insane average of 514 this season. This man was an absolute beast at the plate. And the winner is Byron Mills Jr. The next award is the Golden Bulls. I awarded to the man hit most by pitches. And this guy wasn't a regular starter, so to, you know, a win an award like this, it really does take some dedication. Being hit four times, the winner is the backup catcher, Kyle Asher. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the man who drags us down, the man who has hit into the most double plays. And, well, this guy just goes to show if he's not getting hit by the ball, it's probably better he's not doing anything. Because with four double plays hit into, the winner is, get back up here, Kyle Asher. The next award is the Golden Boot, awarded to the pitcher who has issued the most walks. And this year, well, this guy put up a really good effort, 43 walks. He was a regular starter, and, well, he wasn't quite as good as the Hoff. The winner is Vince Coletti. The next award is the Golden Glasses, awarded to the batter with the most strikeouts this season. And, well, another club record this season for uh, in this category. It was a stunning effort of 41 strikeouts. And the winner is the name we all love to say, Peter Friedendorfer. The next award is the Golden K, awarded to the pitcher with the most strikeouts. And this year, it wasn't just a club record. It was, was it fourth or fifth all-time in, in uh, German baseball history. It was a stunning season. 178 strikeouts. The winner is Tyler Benninghoff. The next award is the Golden Broom, awarded to the man who sweeps clean the bases, the man with the most RBIs. And it was yet another club record this season in this category. With 43 RBIs, the winner is Byron Mills Jr. Now it's time to acknowledge the pitcher with the lowest ERA. And this guy, he was reliable for us out of the bullpen. And we didn't have much of that at all this season. But with an ERA of just 2.63, the winner is Janis Vindermeyer. And now it's time to acknowledge the hitter with the most home runs this year. And this guy wasn't always the most reliable, but when he does hit the ball, oh boy, oh boy, does he hit the ball. With five home runs, the winner is Jimmy Kowale. And now it is time to acknowledge this season's worst player with the awarding of the horse's ass. 
and I thought we were relatively good all season long, to be honest, but big moments cost seasons, and, well, this man dropped an absolute clanger in centre field that arguably cost us a chance to go to the championship series. So this season, for being unable to catch a regulation fly ball, the horse's ass goes to Marcel Vockel. And now it is time to acknowledge this season's best pitcher. Now, there is a formula we use to determine this, but we don't need a formula to decide who is in our best pitcher this year, do we? But... Let's go through it anyway. The formula is, as long as all the winners for tonight's awards actually is listed down in the description. Uh, but let's have a quick look here in third place with a score of 12.93. It's Vindemeyer. In second place with a score of 13.59. It's Vince Chops Coletti. And the winner with an incredible, insane score of 53.29. It is, of course, the Hoff, Tyler Benninghoff. All right, now it's time to acknowledge the best hitter. Uh, well, it's a hitting league, isn't it, the German league? And we had a number of guys that were absolutely immense with the bat. Now, there was a formula we used to determine this. That, again, is listed down in the description. But in third place, with a score of 23.61, please sign a new contract, Drew Campbell. In second place, with a score of 31.61, it's second baseman, Leo Burra. And the winner with a score of 39.9. It is the catcher, Byron Mills Jr. And now it is time to acknowledge this season's Flamingo of the Year with the awarding of the Golden All-Star. And we had so many good players, didn't we? But I think we only really had one outstanding player that at a league level was, was setting records that will stand for a very, very long time. So this season's Golden Star goes to the Hoff, Tyler Benninghoff. So there we go. Congratulations to Tyler and the rest of the winners. Byron Mills, mate, I'm really, really sorry. Batting 500 is an insane achievement, but it's a batting league, isn't it? Not a pitching league, so I'm sorry, mate. We'll get there next year. But that'll do it for the season. Uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed the year. We'll be back bigger and stronger again next season. I'd like to thank everybody who came out tonight in the auditorium. I'd like to thank you all for watching at home. And we'll see you next year. Bigger, better, and we're going to fly. Flamingos will fly next season. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Take care. So there we go. End of season awards done for the season. And it is the Paderborn Untouchables that are crowned German champions. And given that that was the team we beat in the playoff round, um, you do feel a little bit as if it, you know, what could have been, perhaps. What could have been. But uh, there we go. So well done to the Untouchables. Yet again, they proved themselves to be untouchable. Now, we do have some things to catch you up on here. End of season uh, has uh, is upon us. Um... Team goals, we were pretty much not too bad there. Uh, we've got to upgrade at first base, build a top three minor league system, bring more players in that we do draft garbage players. But basically, everybody's happy, which is good. Uh, we've got our new budget. Uh, we have a team payroll of $750,000. Now, I'm going to assume that gives us a little bit of money to play with. We have half a million dollars to spend on free agents and money there for extensions as well. So that is absolutely huge. Um, apparently, our contract was running out. I thought we had a three-year deal. But anyway, we've got a two-year extension. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm thinking we three years is... It, this is probably our year, and then we move on from Germany. If we can't win it in our third year, I don't know if we want to be staying in the German baseball for four years. I think that we might start end our career... Uh, stagnate at a little bit. We have decided to let everybody go. All the staff. No one was particularly good. We're going to take our chances and hope that we can get somebody better. Uh, the top prospect list here is published. Do we have anybody? It's not going to surprise you to realize that no, we don't. Um, the offseason begins. Uh, so this means that there's been some firings. It looks like there's some jobs there around uh, certain leagues. Um, and the big news is that the Bundesliga is expanding. So that's going to be exciting for everybody. We're going to have to protect our players now and do all that sort of fun stuff. Um, but yeah, there we go. So next thing is going to be, uh, we're going to have the expansion team, team shows, and then we're going to have the international free agent signing begin. Uh, so we'll come back for those and see what's on the market for us. 
All right, so we have our expansion teams. They are the Efoot Sun Devils, uh, like the name, and the Pasu Seagulls, not quite so good. The Sun Devils and the Seagulls. Uh, so we're going to have to have an expansion draft. We'll hopefully be able to protect most of our players in that. But the big news is the International Amateur Free Agents. Now, the problem we have with International Amateur Free Agents, if we do just quickly go and have a look here, is that they're international. Now, we know that we can only have so many players. Now, obviously, my mind uh, was, or my eye was instantly drawn to the Australian shortstop here from Sydney as well. Um, but the problem is that it's a foreign player. Um, so, and we can only have so many of those. So, if we were to, say, offer 110 grand, which I don't even know if we can, um, we do have half a million... I'm going to do it because he's Australian and see what happens. And we don't really have a shortstop. But we can't really go silly on the international amateurs because basically um, they're foreign. And, and it's it's not really going to be what we want to do. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, there's also a shortstop there from, from, uh, from the Dominican Republic. And to be honest, he's cheaper, but he's not Australian. And I want to have an Australian in one of my teams at some point here. All right, the next thing we've got to look forward to here is the, uh, the league awards. So we'll be back for those and see if we get any, uh, any recognition uh, from the league. We have breaking news out of Berlin on a busy day for the Flamingos where three contracts have been signed. For more on this, we cross live to local reporter Nico Schweinsteiger. And Nico, this is good news for yeah. our surveillance team. Yeah, yeah, it is wunderbar for the Flamingos as the Drew Campbell signs a three-year extension while Tonis Pape is signing for another year also. Uh, while uh, the Australian shortstop uh, Rhys Coleman is also calling the Berlin home. Okay, so a lot to catch you up on. The big great news is that Drew Campbell has signed his extension. He was wonderful for us last year, uh, an on-base percentage of 638. That is absolutely ridiculous. So he has signed a three-year extension, 50 grand a year. Um, given the money we have, that's absolutely fine. It's a bargain, as a matter of fact. So that's excellent news. Um, further news, we did get our young Australian shortstop, Reese Kalman. Um, so we'll put him in the squad, obviously, Defensively, it is a little bit of an issue. Um, but, I mean, if we look compared to Major League Baseball, he's a potentially a Major League Baseballer. Um, so it's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful signing that we've got there. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully he'll do a good job, even if it is maybe to begin just as a designated hitter. Uh, and the other good news is that Tonis Pepe, uh, at, well, we'll get to in a second, is now three-time Golden Glove winning shortstop. He has signed for another year. He's a really, really good defensive player. Um... With Kalman coming in, he might be less of a starter for us, but he batted 357 last year, so he was, you know, by no means was he uh, was he terrible. And if we do gonna have a look at the Golden Glove winners, and we do have Golden Glove winners, Jimmy Kowale has won himself another Golden Glove at first base. He is a really, really good defensive player. Um, unfortunately, he will be leaving us. His contract is up, and he's 36. He's a foreign player, and he just didn't do enough with the bat. Uh, to stay, but he's won himself a fourth Golden Glove. Uh, other Golden Gloves winners, as I said, Tonis Pape, uh, he's now got three Golden Gloves in a row, and was that the only two? That was the only two. Um, so well done to them. The next award we have is for Reliever of the Year. Um, if it's any of our guys, maybe Vindemeyer actually, he was quite good. So it's not a, a surprise to anybody. Vindemeyer was there. He was third in the voting, so maybe a little bit unlucky. Uh, but the winner went to a Paderborn Untouchable, which is probably fair enough. Um, so well done to him. And there was the uh, winner of the North side of things as well. Uh, the next award is the Platinum Sticks or the Silver Sluggers, whatever they're called. So here we go, and we do have some winners. Byron Mills Jr., that's not a surprise, is it? Giving he batted over 500. He is the winner for catchers, so well done to him. Uh, if we go down and have a look a little bit further here, I thought maybe um, Leo Burra at second base, but not to be. Uh, left field was not... Uh, we've got a center fielder, Marcel Vockel. What is it with our center fielders winning the Silver Slugger? Because it was Van Mensor that got it last year. Um, center fielders in Germany apparently just cannot bat. Uh, so that was the only two again that we got. Um, so maybe a little bit of a shame there. Um, we can see the winners for the south side of things. Uh, the next award is the Rookie of the Year. Um, it's got to be Drew Campbell, doesn't it? 
It's not Drew Campbell, and the other obvious candidate was, of course, Tyler Benninghoff, and it's neither of them, uh, which is a little bit outrageous. Instead, it goes to Victor Ruiz, um, who is, to be fair to him, quite good. Uh, fractured foot, he is out a little bit. Uh, third baseman, fair enough, I guess. He batted over 500 as well, so well done to him uh, and the Rookie of the Year. On the other side of things goes to Jonah Davis. Now, of course, we came across him in the playoffs, didn't we? Um a center fielder who can hit, apparently. So it's just the uh, north side that doesn't have a center fielder that can hit. Next award is the manager of the year. It's probably not going to be us. So no, it's the Paderborn Untouchables manager. I shouldn't have dismissed this, actually. Uh, you know, we did come second in the division, but it is the Paderborn Untouchable guy that won it, which is just about fair enough. Uh, the next award is pitcher of the year. Uh, Benninghoff has to be every chance. Not only did Benninghoff not win it, he wasn't even the highest rated uh, Berlin player. Jens Windermeyer got ahead of him, which is absolutely outrageous. Calvin, this guy, has won it. Uh, again, it's a German. You know, well done to you, I guess. But it's an absolute outrage. Not that he was bad, but it's an absolute outrage that Tyler Benninghoff has not won that award. That, that, that actually disgusts me. Anyway, there we go. So the Cy Young, the German Cy Young, goes to uh, not Tyler Benninghoff. The next award is MVP, Byron Mills Jr. Maybe he's a chance. So, no, Byron Mills Jr. comes in second to Emeke. We came across him, of course, as well. Uh, a German, he's a free agent as well, so we might have a sneaky look at him. Um, but, yeah, there we go. So he is the German MVP, just ahead of Byron Mills. Uh, is there anybody else? Who else do we have up there? We had, did have Drew Campbell. We had Leo Burra. Uh, we had Vindermeyer. Why is he so popular? And Tyler Benninghoff did get a mention in there as well. So well done to uh, to everybody there. Braddon, who of course we came up against in the playoffs in yesterday's episode. So that's all the awards done. Next thing is going to be free agency. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. We'll see what sort of damage we can do. Okay, now before we go on, there has been one player leave the club that I think is maybe worthy of a, of a candidacy or a nomination to potentially go into our Aussie Villain Baseball Journeyman Hall of Fame, and that is Koja Roshek. Now, during our two years at the club with him, he had a batting average of 380, he stole 42 bases, and he was a one-time All-Star. Uh, on, in those two seasons. Now, there's a link in the, des uh, in the description down below. Go uh, down there and click yes or no. Should Roshek be entered into our Hall of Fame as a um, as a Berlin Flamingo? Uh, yes or no. 75% of the voters required. Don't be uh, don't be nice. Be harsh. Be honest. Do you think he's worthy of going into our Hall of Fame? We'll find out next episode. Okay, so here we go. We do have our free agency. Now, I haven't forgotten about the Storks. Their season is still going on. We will check in before this episode is done. Uh, but the free agents has been filed, and we can see that there are some decently big names uh, that, have been, that have been released here. Obviously, Braddon is a good German player. We have our foreign players. I think for the most part, we want to be looking at, at the Germans. Now, obviously, Cardozo, a shortstop. Now, we've just signed that uh, young Australian um, so I don't know if we want to go in on a short stop, but that is certainly uh, interesting. And the fact that he's left the untouchables is maybe a good sign for us moving forward. Um, I mean, the big one is Ian Post, isn't it? An absolute star of German baseball. If we could get him in, that would... I mean, he's a terrible right fielder, but anywhere, just anywhere, you'd get him in just to get his hitting in there, wouldn't you? So maybe, maybe, maybe we can go in and have a look at him. We've got a German catcher. We do, of course, have Byron Mills Jr. And we also have... Um, we also have Asher as the backup, so we probably don't need another catcher, though this guy is certainly a very good one. Um, Caleb Knight is not uh, German. We have Van Rinken, who is German, and again, power, but again, left field. We have Drew Campbell out there, um, but again, a really, really good option. Uh, and we also have a left fielder there, but an American. So there's some really, really interesting looking players that have been released in free agency. Uh, well, now we'll see how many we can snap up, I guess. All right, it has been a busy day. We have signed no fewer than four pitchers. Let's go and have a look at this. First of all, it is Colby Gomez. He is our new starting pitcher, and he can also bat and play first base as well. So, you know, he can... He's Going to be valuable for sort of both uh, both games. Only 23. He has never played professional baseball before. Um, but look at this. He has all the pitches except for maybe a change-up. But potentially even better um, than what he already is. So he is going to be the second starter behind uh, the Hoff. 
Um, so get to know the name. Hopefully, Colby Gomez will be a star for us. He is American, so that is one of our foreign players. But then we have signed a trio of Germans to uh, come into our bullpen. First up, it's Kevin uh, Tristel. Um, he has played in the German League for a number of seasons. ERA hasn't always been the best of the last few seasons, but before that, he was relatively consistent. Um, he's been a starter. We are going to uh, be looking to use him out of our bullpen, though. Didn't give up a home run at all last season, which is good. Um, I just think he could do... Um could do a decent job. Has always had decent war numbers as well, again, apart from last season. But he's only 30. We're paying him 15 grand uh, a year, so hopefully that'll be okay. Just a one-year deal. Uh, Gomez, if you're wondering, was 16 grand a year. So hopefully an absolute uh, an absolute bargain for him. Next up, it is Sven Mitchell. Uh, again, we've got someone here for the bullpen. Not the most pitches, but he's generally good. Uh, he led the, uh, the league in saves. We've signed him from the Hawks. Um, so I think we actually came up against him in the postseason, didn't we? We were only 21 as well. Really good ERA last year. Uh, ERA plus was 483. Whip was just a smidgen above one. He pitched 20 innings, so it's a decent sample size. Um, yeah, I think he could be a really, really good bullpen pitcher for us. He's got decent stamina, so again, somebody else who could maybe start a game if we needed him to, but not with two pitchers. But you know what I mean. It would be an option. Uh, and the third guy is Hans Stoltz. Um, again, it's someone that uh, has started games traditionally, but we will not be looking to using to start games. Again, from the Hawks, really good ERAs by German standards, uh, pretty much all well, the last four years there. Always had good war numbers, um, good uh, strikeouts per walks as well. Um, we're paying him 21 grand a year for three years. And again, I think he could do a really, really good job in the bullpen. So I'm thinking he's a two-time All-Star as well, was an All-Star last year. Um, so I'm thinking we may have done a really good job strengthening the bullpen there. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I'm thinking that's maybe the pitching done. Now we've got to see if we can strengthen, uh, strengthen the hitting. Breaking news out of the Flamingos as the club announced a double coup for GM Arsene Villain. And for more on this, we cross live to local reporter Nico Feinsteiger. And Nico, there's an MVP yeah. in Berlin. Yeah, yeah, this is correct as the three-time All-Star Ian Post has joined the Flamingos on the three-year deal. Uh, also signing is first baseman uh, the uh, Kia Corbina, uh, a one-time All-Star. Uh, these signings look as though the Flamingos will now be the team to beat uh, in the Bundesliga. So this is absolutely massive. Ian Post has signed for us 55 grand a year, a three-year deal. Look at that for a decorated player who's 22. He's been an MVP. He's been a three-time All-Star. He's been a three-time uh, Platinum Stick winner, a two-time champion. He's won the MVP in the second round of the playoffs the last two years as well. He can't really field, but we'll let that slide. He is an amazing, amazing hitter. We've got him off the Paderborn Untouchables, and I tell you what, we might just be the Berlin Flamingo Untouchables if this uh, if this is what the season could be. I'm genuinely excited for our upcoming season now. We've strengthened the pitching, and we've got Ian Post, and just not quite as big, but almost as big. Kai Kubina has also come and joined us, a 21-year-old German first baseman, a left-handed hitter, um, a good defensive player. Uh, now, we know that uh, Kawole was a Golden Glove winner at first base for two seasons. This guy potentially could do that for us as well, but he could also get us quite a few hits. He led the league with eight home runs last season, 46 RBIs. Um, Oh, we're looking a really, really good team all of a sudden, aren't we? So that's absolutely massive. We've got two huge, huge signings in. And I tell you what, get your bets on now. The Flamingos are going to be a force in 2024 German baseball. Hello, is this the Pasu Seagulls? Hi, it's Ozzy Villain. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, thanks. Listen, I just wanted to call and welcome you to the league uh, and see if there's anything you need. Are you sure? Oh, you can never have too many starting pitchers, mate. Yeah, well, it just so happens that I have a guy that uh, just might be a fit in there. <laughs> no, not the Hoff. Don't be ridiculous. He is American, though. That's right, Coletti. Yeah, yeah. What would we want for him? Well, I'm sure we can figure something out, mate. Um, what about your shortstop? Really, an all-star? I hadn't realised. Well, I mean, Coletti's a future all-star, so I'd say that's a fair, a fair, uh, fair swap. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. If you're not sure, uh, maybe I'll look to send him somewhere else. It's a deal? Fantastic. 
So there we go, Vince Coletti has left uh, the Flamingos. He never really did it for us, did he? He was okay last year, he had a war of 1.7, uh, but his whip was always high, his ERA was always a little bit too high uh, for, a, for a foreign pitcher. We know that we've already got in um, Gomez to come in and, and start, so he could have maybe had a role in our bullpen, but I think we could probably do better for a foreign slot. So we've shipped him off to one of the new boys, Perso Seagulls, and in return... We've got ourselves a new shortstop, Lucas Helber. Now, he was at the Hawks last year. We remember him uh, from last episode. He's a Golden Glove winning shortstop two times, an All-Star, a, uh, also a Platinum Stick winner at shortstop. So he's, he's basically uh, like Tonus Pape, but he can hit. Um, so that's really, really good news for us. So he's coming to the lineup, and my basic plan now is that uh, Tonus Pape will move over and defensively play at third base. Still be terrible with the bat, but... We'll get another really good fielder in. That means Friedendorfer, uh, he sort of drops out of the lineup. He can play first base, so we'll try and improve his defensive rating so he can sort of cover a backup at first base and at third base. And it means that Rice Schertz, uh, who of course was quite good for us at times last year, uh, batted 429 for the little bit that he did play, um, he just drops out altogether. Breaking news in the honkball hoof to Clausen, where the Silicone Storks have been crowned champions for the second time in three seasons after defeating the Allen Amsterdam Pirates 4-1 in the championship series. In other news tonight... So there we go, the Silicone Storks have won it again, 4-1 over the LND Amsterdam Pirates, so well done to them, the second time in three years that they've won that. We have a quick look here, at, there's still some familiar names, Ryan Jackson, our shortstop when we won it, is still there, he had a good uh, final series, Francesco Carabello is still there, uh, only two home runs in the postseason this time, Urbanus still around and doing a good job, uh, and we've got Ben Chura is still there, one of our youngsters, uh, and that is old Alvarez, who was a little, not quite so good for us. So pretty heavy turnover. Now the big question there is, I don't see Bernardina. Um, where is Roger Bernardina? That's the big question. Let's go and have a look at the Storks. How do we do that? Uh, if we go playoff tree Storks. Um, is Bernardina still around? Is he... Bladell is still there, but on the bench, that surprises me. Uh, although there is foreign player limits, isn't there? Bernardina, Bernardina, Bernardina. I don't see Bernardina. Roger Bernardina, there he is. So he is still in the lineup. Uh, he is a free agent, is he, at the end of the season? He is. Uh, he can't really field anymore. His legs are gone. He only batted 231 this year. So maybe we're seeing the end of the king. Um... But, uh, yeah, there we go. Roger Bernardina is still around. He is still a silicone stalk. So, well done to them. It's good to see them winning the trophy again, isn't it? Okay, we have a little bit to catch you up on. First of all, meet our new closer, Stephen Fuentes. We signed him on a free transfer from free agency. His last club was uh, the Oakland Athletics. He has played in Major League Baseball. And I tell you what, he pitched seven innings, ERA of 2.5 and a whip of one. So if he can keep that form going, he will be a good uh, a good addition for us. Um, but yeah, so he's going to be our closer for the new season. Obviously, that's a foreign player, which means we need to get rid of a foreign player. Uh, so if we go and have a look at the trade we've done, and that is getting Edgar Martinez out of our team. He wasn't particularly good last year. Um, he had one good year at Paderborn, and maybe that was the outlier. Uh, so we've got rid of him. We don't obviously need him now. We've got Fuentes in our bullpen. So he's left. And in replacement of him, we've got another Amer American. We've got another foreign player. But I just couldn't turn down this trade. We've got a really, really good first baseman defensively. Really, really good hitter. He batted 500 last season. Um, I couldn't say no. Couldn't say no. He's a leader as well. Uh, so what this has meant for our lineup is basically that our young Australian shortstop, uh, we've had to ditch him for now. Um, let him see if he can develop a little bit. Uh, and that basically means that uh, if we go and have a quick look at the lineup, and let me tell you, our team is just absolutely mouth-watering right now. It means that Granberg will come in and play first base, and it means that the new designated hitter will be Kabina. Um, obviously, he can then come in and play first base as well. We have options to move things around. Um, but that leads our, our foreign players now as Byron Mills Jr. And I'm wondering out loud now if we could maybe he batted 500 last year but I'm thinking maybe we could get rid of him and get a better defensive catcher in um 
Yeah, but anyway, so he's one. He's our foreign player now, along with Granberg and also Drew Campbell, who is an it was an well, he's a star, an absolute star. So our lineup is looking tasty right now. I cannot wait to get this season started. All right, we are at spring training, which means we have to bring the episode to a close. But we have a quick look and meet our team here. What a team it's looking as though we are building here. So many players that are ranked first or second in their position. It's really, really, really good. Um, in fact, you might even say it was going a little bit too well. And you would be correct. Because what has happened, if we look at the schedule, is that we've gone to like a MLB style, we're going to play every day. Um... Which in and of itself isn't a massive deal. The season's done in April, which just leaves quite an off season. Uh, but yeah, not a problem in and of itself. But the problem, of course, is that we've built a pitching staff basically um, to play a two-game series once a week. So we don't have enough starters now. And I'm not quite sure how we're going to get around this. The one positive we do have is uh, we can see we've moved Stoltz in. Now, he's predominantly been a starter throughout his career uh, and done a good job of it. We've got Vindermeyer, who, again, has been a starter before he came to us and done a good job of it uh, for the most part. Uh, Mitchell, again, has been a starter, you know, in the past. He's got the stamina for it, maybe not the pitches. So we do have we do have pitches that can go and, and, and start games. Another one there you can see, Tristel, again, was a starter last season. Um it's just it's just a numbers thing, isn't it? So I'm hoping that the pitchers do seem to recover very quickly uh, in European baseball. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to get by with three starters. If not, it may be a situation where we're going to have to sacrifice somebody out of the actual lineup um, and bring in and bring in another pitcher. Um, we only have a 20 man roster. That's the spring training roster. We only have a 20 man roster. Everybody's going to be in the same boat in the league, though. So, you know, we'll, we'll kind of play it by year and see where, where we end up. Um, but I suspect we might still need to go and do a little bit of business and maybe get another pitcher in. Um, we don't really have too much by way of German pitchers. Uh, we'd be looking at bringing Brunkhorst back in, who, of course, was an embarrassment last season. <laughs> <laughs> How we didn't win the the, the horse's ass is beyond me, actually. Uh, Dominic Werner always did a decent job. Maybe he's someone we could look to bring back in. Um, but yeah, basically, that's a little bit of a spanner in the works. It's a massive spanner in the works. We'll just have to see how it sort of plays out. Um, but uh, but yeah, there we go. Now we have uh, we have got our staff in. Our new manager is Carlos Alz Al Almanza. Um, He's never managed before. The reason we got him in is that he's supposed to have a decent development influence. Whether that works or not, time will tell. He's certainly no worse than the old guy. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens there. The bench coach we've got in is Ronnie Weltley. Again, a first year, uh, first year guy. We were desperate. He is not necessarily the best. But again, we'll see how he goes. New uh, pitching coach we got in was uh, Yu Chen Zen. Um, he's previously done a Decent job if you look at ERAs here with uh, the Guardians. Uh, I'm not quite sure. CBL, what's that? Chinese, so in China. So uh, he's done a decent job there. So I hope he does a good job for us as well. Uh, we've got the same hitting coach, the same scouting director, and team trainer. We did have to get, I basically got the same guy back. Um, I got him on a three-year deal this time. I had to go into commissioner mode because there was no team trainer. So we just got the same guy as last season. He's not, he's not good by any means. Uh, and manager options, you can see that we are now out of commissioner mode. So um, that just kind of is what it is. But there we go. That's going to bring us to the end of the episode. Let me know in the comments what you think. Will we be able to go and win the league next season? Pitching aside or starting pitching aside, we've certainly put ourselves in a very, very good position, I think. Um, don't forget to go and vote whether Roshek should enter our Hall of Fame or not. And we'll be back next time to get the season underway against the Solheim Alligators. Uh, so that will be interesting. Both the expansion teams have come into our division as well, which makes me wonder if that is why um, the, the, the fixtures have been rescheduled, if the game sort of defaulted back to MLS-style um, fixtures or schedules with the with the expansion. But anyway, that's all for next time. We'll get things underway against the Sol Soligen Alligators. Uh, don't forget to hit thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and we will unleash our flamingos next time out. Take care.